Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video I'm going to go over my top 5 gimbal movements that I use in my real estate videos and also demonstrate how I execute them in order to achieve the best results. So my philosophy for a successful real estate video, or any video for that matter, is to have a nice variety of shot movements so that the video doesn't become too repetitive or boring. Our main goal when we create these videos is to keep the viewer interested and engaged until the end of the video and to get them excited about the property we are showcasing. Having a good variety of well-performed shots is key in this equation. In this video, I'm going to go over my main five types of gimbal shots that I use in almost all my real estate videos. I will also show you some examples and also illustrate how I go about performing these shots with my gimbal in order to achieve the best results. I'm sure I'll also look like a bit of an idiot while I do it, so please enjoy. I'm not going to go over any of the basic or technical aspects of shooting real estate videos in this video, such as camera settings. I have another video that covers all of those things and I'll link to that up on the screen right now. I'll simply mention that I am shooting these videos in a higher frame rate, specifically 60 or 120 frames per second, in order to slow them down in post to get smooth, graceful results. Alright, without further ado, let's get into these 5 main types of gimbal shots that I use when creating my real estate videos. This is probably the most basic and widely used gimbal shot out of the bunch. It simply refers to a forward walking shot entering a room or toward your subject. It's sort of the bread and butter shot, but it's also important not to overuse it so that the shots in your videos don't become too repetitive. Again, having a mix of different types of shots is key to keeping your audience engaged and keeping them from clicking off your video after only a few seconds. It's also a good idea too to have editing in mind while you're shooting so that you can visualize how these clips are going to go together later and also to ensure that there's diversification among them and that they will have a good flow. My advice for achieving good results for this type of shot is mastering what's called the ninja walk. This simply refers to keeping your knees bent and shuffling your feet in a way that minimizes any up and down movement. That up and down movement is really the key thing to pay attention to. If you just walk normally while performing this shot, you will notice that your video footage has a bit of a bounce to it, and that's exactly what we're seeking to avoid with this type of shot. Yep, you guessed it, this shot is simply the reverse of the forward movement shot. This type of shot creates interest because it reveals the scene as you move backward, and it's definitely a great type of shot to include in your videos. This shot is executed in the same manner as the forward movement shot, just in reverse. A backward ninja walk keeping your knees bent, and paying mind to minimizing or eliminating that unwanted up and down movement. You could of course just do a forward movement shot, then reverse the clip in editing. However, I do recommend that you just perform the shot manually while on site. Sometimes reversing a clip in editing doesn't look so natural. Pans and tilts are staple camera moves used in almost every video production in some shape or form. These type of shots are great to throw in for variation, and also they're great for tight spots where there's little or no room to walk and create movement in some other way. Specifically what comes to mind is when shooting bathrooms when there's mirrors to avoid or tight bedrooms. Really these types of shots can be used wherever though. I simply perform these shots by using the joystick on the gimbal, pressing left or right for pans or up and down for tilts. Simple and effective. The slider mimic shot is one of my favorite shots because I really think it gives the video that cinematic feel. This is a horizontally moving shot, moving more or less parallel to your subject. It really helps to utilize a foreground element in these type of shots to accentuate the movement and achieve that parallax effect where the background and foreground elements are moving at different speeds. With my 16 to 35 millimeter lens, I usually have it zoomed all the way into 35 millimeter to help with this effect. And I also have my f-stop all the way open at f2.8 in order to blur out the foreground a little bit. All of this helps capture that cinematic feel. I found the way to achieve the best results for this type of shot is to keep your arms and your feet still and use your legs to perform the movement of the shot. I find if you try to use your arms to perform the movement, it's more difficult to keep the movement smooth, avoid any unwanted movements, and also keep the camera level and parallel to your subject. The last kind of shot I want to cover is a jib or crane mimic shot. This is another type of shot that can add a cinematic feel to your videos. This shot is achieved by your camera rising up vertically in relation to your subject as it would if it were attached to a jib or a crane as you would see in a big budget production. Also it's important to have a foreground element close to your camera as it was with the slider mimic shots to really accentuate the movement. If there's no foreground element, the movement isn't very obvious or exciting. 
Sometimes I zoom in for these shots, but a lot of the times I shoot them wide as well. To execute this shot, I again rely on my legs and not my arms. I crouch down and then rise up using my knees while holding the gimbal steady. Especially for this shot, using your arms to raise the camera makes it really difficult to achieve the desired result. I find the shot almost never comes out well when using my arms to do the shot. The camera motion isn't very smooth and you get some weird, unwanted movements. Alright guys, so those are my top 5 gimbal movements that I utilize when creating my real estate videos. The sample clips you've been seeing in this video are from a house that I shot just the other day. The house wasn't very big and the video isn't very long, so I'll play that for you now so you can see how I put all these clips together, how they flow, and how the variation of these clips helps to keep the video interesting. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you again on the next one.